For today's video, we are going to talk about how to divide radicals and I'm going to show you all the possible problems that you may encounter in this topic. So let's have an example. On example number 1, we have square root of 35 divided by square root of 7. In dividing radicals, always remember we can only divide radicals if we have the same index. Since we have the same index, let us rewrite this one in fraction form. That is square root of 35 over square root of 7. Since we can divide the numerator and denominator, square root of 35 divided by square root of 7, it will give us square root of 5. And this will be our answer. On example number 2, we have square root of 32, x raised to 4, y raised to 3, divided by square root of 8, x, y. Again, we have the same index, so let us rewrite this one in fraction form, that is square root of 32, x raised to 4, y raised to 3, divided by square root of 8, x, y. So let us have 32 divided by 8, it will give us 4. So we are going to have square root of 4, and then we have x raised to 4 divided by x let us subtract our exponent that is x cubed and then we have y cubed divided by y that is y square and to simplify let us have the square root of 4 that is 2 and let us divide the exponent of the radicand by 2 because our index is 2 so let us have x square and x raised to 1 if you are going to add it will give us x cubed and then let us write y square so let us have 2 and the square root of x square is x square root of y square is y and then we have square root of x and this will be our answer on example number 3 we have square root of 75 x raised to 8 y raised to 4 divide by square root of 3 x raised to 5 y raised to 4 since we have the same index let us rewrite this one in fraction form so let us have square root of 75 x raised to 8 y raised to 4 over square root of 3 x raised to 5 y raised to 4 so let us divide let us have 75 divide by 3 that is 25. So we are going to have square root of 25 and let us have x raised to 8 over x raised to 5 that is x cubed and then we have y raised to 4 divide by y raised to 4 so we are going to cancel this one so we are going to write as 1 so this will be 25 times 1 that is 25 x cubed and to simplify, let us have the square root of 25, and that is 5. And then let us divide the exponent of the radicand by 2 because our index is 2. So let us have x square and then x. So let us have 5. Square root of x square is x, and we have square root of x. And this will be our answer. On example number 4, we have 4th root of 35, x raised to 5, divided by 4th root of 7. So this time, our index is 4. So let us write this one in fraction form. Let us have 4th root of 35, x raised to 5, over 4th root of 7. So let us divide. 35 divided by 7, that is 5. So we are going to have 4th root of 5 x raised to 5. Since our index is 4, let us divide the exponent of the radicand by 4. So let us have 4th root of 5, x raised to 4, and x raised to 1, total of 5. The 4th root of x raised to 4, that is x, and let us write 4th root of 5x, and this will be our answer. On example number 5, we have quantity square root of 8 plus square root of 24 divided by 2. So to simplify, let us write this one in fraction form. So let us have square root of 8 plus square root of 24 all over square root of 2. 
Since the denominator of square root of 8 and square root of 24 is 2, let us write this one as square root of 8 over square root of 2 plus square root of 24 over square root of 2. So let us divide square root of 8 divided by square root of 2, that is square root of 4. And square root of 24 divided by square root of 2, that is square root of 12. So let us have the square root of 4, that is 2. And let us find the factors of 12, which one of the factors is perfect square, that is 4 and 3. 4 multiplied by 3 is 12, and 4 is a perfect square. So let us have 2 plus the square root of 4 is 2, and then we have square root of 3. And this will be our answer. On example number 6, we have 2 over square root of 3. Since we can't divide the numerator and the denominator, let us rationalize the denominator to eliminate the radical sign in the denominator. So let us write this one as 2 over square root of 3. And to rationalize this one, let us multiply the numerator and denominator by square root of 3 to eliminate the radical sign on the denominator. So let us have 2 times square root of 3, that is 2 square root of 3. And let us have square root of 3 times square root of 3, that is square root of 9. Or if you want, you can write as square root of 3 and then square. And then if you are going to cancel this one, it will give us 3. And the square root of 9 is also 3. So let us have 2, square root of 3, square root of 9 is 3, and this will be our answer. On example number 7, we have square root of 3 over square root of 2. Again, we can't divide the numerator and the denominator, so let us rationalize this one by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 2. So let us have square root of 3 times square root of 2, that is square root of 6. And square root of 2 times square root of 2, so let us write as square root of 2 raised to 2. So let us have square root of 6, and let us cancel the radical sign and the exponent 2, that is 2. And this will be our answer. On example number 8, we have square root of 1 over 5. So to simplify, let us write this one as square root of 1 over square root of 5. The square root of 1 is 1, and let us have square root of 5 on the denominator. To eliminate the radical sign on the denominator, let us rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 5. So let us have 1 times square root of 5, that is square root of 5. And let us have square root of 5 times square root of 5, that is square root of 5 squared. So let us have square root of 5 over square root of 5 squared, and that is 5. And this will be our answer. On example number 9, we have square root of 3 over 8. To simplify, let us write this one as square root of 3 over square root of 8. And then let us rationalize by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 8. So let us have square root of 3 times square root of 8, that is square root of 24. And let us have square root of 8 raised to 2. So let us find the factors of 24, which one of the factors is perfect square. And that is 4 and 6. 4 times 6 is 24, and 4 is a perfect square. And let us eliminate the radical sign and the exponent 2, that is 8. The square root of 4, that is and we have square root of 6 over 8. Since we can simplify 2 over 8, because the greatest common factor of 2 and 8 is 2. So let us have 1 square root of 6 over 4, or you can write as square root of 6 over 4. And this will be our answer. Let me give you another solution on how we can simplify square root of 3 over 8. So let us have square root of 3 over square root of 8. To eliminate the radical sign on the denominator, we want our denominator to become a perfect square. So let us multiply this one by square root of 2. Let us have square root of 3 times square root of 2, that is square root of 6. And square root of 8 times square root of 2, that is square root of 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So as you can see, we come up with the same answer. 
On example number 10, we have cube root of 7 over 2x. To simplify, let us rewrite this one as cube root of 7 over cube root of 2x. To eliminate the radical sign on the denominator, we want our denominator to become a perfect cube. So let us multiply the numerator and denominator by cube root of 4x squared. If you are going to multiply cube root of 4x squared on the denominator, it will give us a perfect cube. So let us have cube root of 7 times cube root of 4x squared, it will give us 28x squared. And let us have cube root of 2x multiplied by cube root of 4x squared, that is cube root of 8x cubed. And to simplify, let us have cube root of 28x squared, and the cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of x cubed is x, and this will be our answer. On example number 11, we have 2 plus square root of 5 all over 5 minus square root of 5. As you can see, our denominator is a binomial, and to eliminate the radical sign on the denominator, we are going to use conjugates. So let me give you following pairs of conjugates. Let's say if we have 3 plus square root of 2, and the conjugate of this one is 3 minus square root of 2. And let's say if we have negative 5 minus square root of 3, the conjugate of this one is negative 5 plus square root of 3. And lastly, let's say if we have square root of 5 minus 2, the conjugate of this one is negative square root of 5 minus 2. So to eliminate the radical sign on the denominator, let us multiply this one by the conjugate of the denominator. That is 5 plus square root of 5. So let us have 2 plus square root of 5 times the quantity 5 plus square root of 5. And to multiply the conjugate, let us simply multiply the first term to first term and last term to last term. So let us have 5 times 5 is 25 negative square root of 5 multiplied by positive square root of 5 that is negative square root of 25 and let us use void method to simplify the numerator let us have 2 times 5 is 10 2 multiplied by square root of 5 that is 2 square root of 5 5 times square root of 5 is 5 square root of 5 and square root of 5 times square root of 5 is positive square root of 25. And let us have 25 on the denominator minus the square root of 25 is 5. So let us have 10. And let us add this one. 2 square root of 5 plus 5 square root of 5 that is 7 square root of 5 plus the square root of 25 is 5. All over 25 minus 5 is 20. So let us have 10 plus 5 is 15 plus 7 square root of 5 all over 20. So you can write your answer in this form or if you want, you can write as 15 over 20 plus 7 square root of 5 over 20. Since we can simplify 15 over 20 because the greatest common factor of this one is 5, so 15 becomes 3 and 20 becomes 4, and then we have 7 square root of 5 over 20. This will be our answer. On example number 12, we have 2 square root of x minus 3 square root of y all over 3 square root of x plus 2 square root of y. To simplify the given expression, we are going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Let us have 3 square root of x minus 2 square root of y as the conjugate and then let us have 2 square root of x minus 3 square root of y times the quantity 3 square root of x minus 2 square root of y 
and let us multiply the first term to first term and last term to last term on the denominator. 3 times 3 is 9, and then we have square root of x times square root of x, that is square root of x squared, and the square root of x squared is x. And then we have positive times negative is negative, 2 times 2 is 4, times the square root of y times square root of y, that is square root of y squared, and the square root of y squared is y. And let us use FOIL method to simplify the numerator. Let us have this one. 2 times 3 is 6, and then we have square root of x squared. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and then we have square root of xy. And then we have this one. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, square root of xy. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, square root of y squared. And let us have 9x minus 4y on the denominator. So let us have 6, and the square root of x squared is x. And let us combine this one, negative 4 square root of xy minus Four, minus 9 rather, square root of xy, that is negative 13 square root of xy plus 6 square root of y square is y all over 9x minus 4y. And this will be our answer. On our last example, we have 2 square root of 18 divided by quantity 3 square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 2. To simplify the given expression, let us write this one as 2 square root of 18 divided by 3 square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 2. And to eliminate the radical sign of the denominator, let us multiply this one by the conjugates of the denominator. That is 3 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 2. So let us have 2 square root of 18 times the quantity 3 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 2. And to multiply the denominator, since we have the sum and difference of the same term, we have 3 times 3, that is 9, and square root of 3 times square root of 3, that is square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. And then, let us have positive 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, Square root of 2 times square root of 2, that is square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So let us have 2 times 3 is 6, square root of 18 times square root of 3, that is square root of 54, and 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, square root of 18 times square root of 2 is square root of 36, all over 9 times 3 is 27, Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So let us have 6. And let us find the factors of 54, which one of the factors is a perfect square. And that is 9 and 6. 9 times 6 is 54 and 9 is a perfect square. Minus 4 times the square root of 36 is 6. All over 27 minus 8 is 19. So let us have 6 times the square root of 9 is 3, and let us have square root of 6 minus 4 times 6 is 24, all over 19. 6 times 3 is 18, and then we have square root of 6 minus 24, all over 19. And this will be our final answer. So I hope you've learned from this video. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless us all.